Justly appointed special counsel begins work today overseeing some of the legal troubles facing former President Donald Trump. Specifically, the criminal investigations surrounding documents found in a Mar in Mar-a-Lago and alleged efforts to overturn a 2020 election. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland has more on this. Scott. Live, Anne Marie. Good morning. These are two unprecedented investigations into a former president. First, that FBI seizure of records in August from Mar-a-Lago and the alleged efforts to block the peaceful transfer of power in America. Former President Trump, now an official candidate for the White House in 2024, is facing an unprecedented wave of investigations. A wave that's building up with new energy with the naming of longtime federal prosecutor Jack Smith to serve as a special counsel. The Trump administration's former deputy attorney general told Face the Nation the development indicates a possible criminal case could be coming. That they still believe that they have a viable potential case. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they made a decision to go forward, uh, but it certainly is an indication they believe it's a possibility. Over the weekend, the former president echoed his previous claims the investigations are political. This horrendous abuse of power is the latest in a long series of witch hunts. Meanwhile, with six weeks remaining to finish its work, the House committee investigating the U.S. Capitol attack has kept its sights set squarely on Trump. And some members say they have enough for a criminal referral. The committee's final comprehensive written report is expected to go to the printer by the middle of next week with a full release of all of its findings. Within a month, they, the public will have everything that we've found, all the evidence, um, for good or ill. The ongoing probes and scandals surrounding Trump and the Republican Party's failure to make bigger gains in the midterm elections are taking a toll on the former president's standing in his own party with other possible Republican contenders speaking at a high-profile convention in Las Vegas. We reject woke ideology. We have to stop losing and start winning. And former Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan urging the GOP to move on. We get past Trump, we start winning elections. We stick with Trump, we keep losing elections. That's just how I see it. A victory of sorts for the former president over the weekend when Twitter announced it was going to reinstate Trump's account. The former president says he doesn't plan to return to the site, but a member of the January 6th Select Committee says the reinstatement is a, quote, terrible mistake because the last time Trump was on Twitter, his supporters stormed the Capitol. Vlad, Amory. So, Scott, let's turn to the Democratic leadership in the House of Representatives. Uh, explain to our viewers who the main contenders for the top positions are and what direction does the party indicate that they want to move in? Yeah, and what's noteworthy is the three contenders at this moment are unopposed with a final decision likely the last day of this month. So next week, the new nominee or contender to be the House Democratic leader is Hakeem Jeffries, a 10-year congressman from New York City. The nominee or contender to be the new House Democratic whip is Catherine Clark from suburban Boston. She would be the highest ranking woman in the U.S. Congress if she's chosen for that post. And Pete Aguilar running for the number three post. His name may sound familiar in part because Aguilar was on that high profile January 6th select committee and helped lead some of those nationally televised hearings. At this moment, they're unopposed. There could be other contenders, but in leadership races, you got to move early and move fast. And these three have all moved early and moved fast. All right, Scott McFarland, thank you.